Hey there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction and Renovation Magazine. Breaking out the archives still. I know, archives. It's not like I'm from Boston. Anyway, this is January, February 2016. Fenton Patel, Vision Hospitality, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Thanks for hitting. Let's see, this one was uh, 160 pages. Oh, wow. I'm sitting here with my kid on my birthday, it looks like. I had hair back then. God, that was only seven years ago. Is that right? Yeah, four, three. Yeah, seven years ago. God, man, look at that, man. Where'd my hair go? Anyway, we're digital now, but this is what the magazine used to look like. You know, it feels really cool looking at back uh, what we were doing. You know, it was, uh, you know, does everybody remember what they were doing back in? January, February, 2016. I know I was having my event, but, uh, you know, shoot, man. It feels like it was forever ago. And then then, and then the other aspect of it feels like it was, was like yesterday. So hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, it's hump day coming up. Uh, you know, I got Memorial Day weekend coming up and then the summer and then the humidity. It's been an unbelievable six-month journey, the last uh, Q1, Q2. And, uh you know, uh, you got three and four, you got all sorts of things that are going on. And, uh, you know, I got my lacrosse stuff. It's lacrosse season, guys. So like, you know, we had the uh, opening brackets last weekend, some excellent lacrosse. Uh, some teams got bounced that, you know, was a shocker. But uh, all in all, uh, now it's the quarterfinals and the, and the last remaining eight. Those are some really good teams. So if you're a lacrosse guy, a junkie like myself, you know, I'm telling you, this weekend's going to be unbelievable lacrosse. And then the, the finals over Memorial Day weekend for D1, 2, and 3. So uh, I thank my wife for letting me watch all those games last week, man, and get some stuff done. Man, it was awesome. So thank you so much, Kristen. Uh, you're the best. And uh other than that, uh, you know, another week of getting stuff done. My new issue is going to be posted here in the next day or so. So can't wait. And then to go and start another one all day long, you know. Um, but hopefully everybody's having a great rest of the week. And, uh, you know, tump day. So, you know what? We are going to talk to a gentleman out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His name is Tim Schwackhammer. And uh, he is the uh, uh, brand manager and founder of Mold Mix. They're a, a mold remediation uh franchisee kind of corporate gig and uh they also do other testing options when you have those issues and uh listen we're all in construction we all know what mold can do you know it's uh you know it's really bad stuff and uh uh you know like anything it's gotten worse over the years and, and now we know a lot more about it you know way back when probably you know we didn't wear seatbelts. you know cigarettes were good for you you know and uh you learn all this stuff and now all of a sudden man you have this stuff and it's a whole new sector you have all these guys popping out there like you know, our specialists, basically, you know, so, uh, you know, with, with health in mind and, you know, indoor air quality and just, you know, bad stuff that, you know, you, you should know about, especially, you know, like, uh, you know, like I'm going to be building my house here eventually when I don't know, but eventually I'm going to build that freaking house up on the lake. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't want to have mold in there. I can tell you that, you know, we're going to do whatever we can to treat it, you know, because, you know, once the drywall goes up and you you can't see what goes on in back there, man, you know, it's dicey, you know, depending on where you live in the country, what kind of immunity you have. And uh, so, Tim, say hello to our audience out there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Well, hello, everybody. And thank you very much for uh, having me on. Uh, did I get the bio correct? You know, uh, sometimes I get tongue tied, you know, <laughs> Yeah, no, you you hit all the high points. So I'm with Mold Medics. We do mold remediation, uh, indoor air quality issues in general. So predominantly mold, uh, air duct cleaning, radon is another big one that we work on. Uh, and that's that's really our core competency and it's what we do. Okay, so so here's how it works, Tim. You're going you're gonna to tell, I'm going to do it in three parts with you. OK, you can tell your story where you grew up, brothers, sisters, you know, you know, all that good stuff and how you ended up where you are today. And then uh We'll talk some lessons learned over the last couple of years that we've all had to, you know, you know, deal with. And then you'll leave one positive thought or phrase with our audience and your contact info, and then we'll close it out. So with that said, the floor is yours. Tell us your story. Sounds good. So, yeah, my name is Tim Swackhammer. I am uh, the younger of two sons, uh, born to my father, Jeffrey Swackhammer Sr., who is best described as a serial entrepreneur. Uh, so throughout my entire childhood and everything, he was involved in a number of different businesses. He had car lots. He had, uh, I think his first big franchise that he was in was uh, 
dollar store. So that was an old franchise that's uh, oh, now wow. broke, but uh, I sort of grew up in that business. I mean, started working the cash register at about seven year seven years old. Uh, stocking shelves and all that kind of stuff for the family business. Gotta uh, love retail. Oh yeah. yes, <laughs> uh, and it it was really it was a cool experience because while a lot of other kids were uh, doing a lot more sports and things like that, I was pretty heavily involved uh, in the business uh, from at a pretty young age and saw a lot of that growing up. So it gave me a really uh, a really profound interest in business and entrepreneurship uh, that I really kind of haven't been able to shake all these years. So, mm -hmm. uh, as we fast forward, I went to college, uh, did grad school, a lot of that, but completely unrelated field, uh, did all that for criminology. But while I was in college, uh, my father had started a wireless business a few years prior, uh, through a franchise. And I came on as we opened up store number, I think it was either three or four, uh, with our wireless franchise. And, we together with uh, my older brother, who's in the business as well, we just kind of grew it over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we were growing it, we're currently at uh, 20 stores uh, for that business. But as we were growing, we wanted to start to diversify and look into some other businesses that we could get involved with. Uh, and we've done a, a few different ones of those. We're also in a, we have a hotel. We've got a lot in uh, various vacation rental properties, some development uh, and a couple other independent businesses. Uh, but we also found the home services and the home service space. And that's really sort of where a lot of uh, a lot of mold medics came to start. We were working with a, another home service business. And while we were there, we noticed that there were a lot of opportunities uh, in the mold space to really focus on things that were being ignored by a lot of the other contractors out there. So typically when you talk to talk about mold remediation contractors, you're generally talking about your large restoration companies. And these are companies that work nearly exclusively for insurance companies. Uh, they're typically not working and contracting directly with the homeowner. They're generally going through the insurance whenever there's been a fire, a flood, some sort of big water loss, something along those lines. And mold is just sort of a add on to that. Uh, so we're very different in that we focus on number one, the, the environmental concerns specifically, but also we're focusing on the customer and their experience. Not really, okay, what does the insurance company say it will take to get it back to free loss levels? Uh, we're working really directly with the homeowner to rectify those issues. And that was that was a big sort of light bulb was seeing how much opportunity there was working directly on the homeowner side rather than for the insurance company. Did you, did you know anything about mold or any of that stuff before you, before you did, you know, ventured in there or not? So a little bit going into it, but really where a lot of my education came from, obviously I went through a lot of the different uh, third party certifications and those kind of things to, to make sure that I had a functional knowledge there. But a lot of the, the more informal knowledge came from actually working with clients who have mold sensitivity uh, talking to them, looking at the resources that they're utilizing from various functional medicine practitioners, all of the different online resources, the various Facebook groups, and really trying to understand what is their experience like and how can we as a company improve upon that? Because that's, that's going to end up being very different from the IICRC protocols. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be similar, but there's going to be a lot of stuff where we need to be more particular in how we go about it and how we deliver that excellent customer experience that we're shooting for every single time. You know, it, it, it's so cool to talk to someone that actually has done retail, worked in retail, you, you, you've built a store, you've built a brand, you've built a business, uh, and now you're, you're going into that like kind of facility maintenance side of things, you know, at, at a residential, you know, it could be commercial, but you know, right now it's residential. And uh, that, uh, you know, you've seen all these things, you know, you know, it's funny. I, I know a lot of guys that have built stores, you know, many of them have, have never done, you know, gone into any of those stores. You know, they just build the buildings. You know what I mean? You know, they're good builders. That's what they mm -hmm. do. So it's good. You know, it, it, it's it's interesting that, you know, you've done all these things and you're also in there as well. You know where I'm coming from? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's it's helpful. My wife always jokes that I don't have a hobby. My hobby is researching other hobbies. And that applies really well to the business side because I love learning about new businesses and learning about different sides of it, going from the franchisee side to the franchisor side uh, has been a really, really interesting journey and learning a lot along the way. Um, but the uh, the second thing that really 
sparked a lot of the Moldmetics growth was identifying from that sales and customer service, more retail background. Um, I'm used to the customer experience being the top priority. You got to make sure customers are completely taken care of. You got to make sure all their questions are answered uh, and that they want to come back because you know they've got a variety of options. Mm -hmm. And whenever we started in home services and with mold, uh, it was pretty apparent at that point that while there are some really great craftsmen in the home services, a lot of them really leave a lot to be desired on the customer experience side. Oh, so sure. Mm -hmm. By taking that and focusing on customer experience, communication, uh, going into things with the heart of a teacher. So we're trying to educate our clients and make sure that they fully understand the, uh, the different situations that they're encountering. That's really gone a long way in separating us from a lot of the competition out there. Let's talk about, uh, you know, as we come at, you know, we've been at this thing on, on this ride for about three years now. And, uh, you know, the country basically is open. Talk about some of the lessons learned, you know, over the, you know, from the beginning till in the middle. And now we're coming out of it. You know, you know, give us an idea of, you know, where your mind was and how you were, you know, where you were at. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, honestly, I think whenever we talk about that, uh, there's there was a lot of different pivoting involved in a variety of different businesses. Uh, we, even before any of this went down, had done a little bit of the home or office disinfection side. And mm -hmm. obviously, whenever everything went down there, that uh, it became pretty interesting because demand for that went in weird waves. Uh, we were those, well, I mean, there were so many of my clients that were, you know, if they were in uh, woodworking or they were in fixtures or any of that stuff, they went and put up, you know, all these sne sneeze guards and they went and freaking did the mask. They did, they did all this stuff, you know, and, uh, and, and, and listen, some of them were, were hooked up to people that, you know, the people were furloughed, the offices weren't open, you know, not, you know, depending on where you live determined, you know, what was open and what wasn't. And, uh, and uh, but, you know, some of these guys, they I mean, they 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 did, you know, thousands and thousands of stores, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, someone had to make it, you know, and yep. it's cool that they could turn like that and then hopefully turn back to where, you know, they were, you know. But I mean, it, it was uh, it was, it, you know, so, uh, you know, when I grew up, my, my family's been in construction since 1888. And it's wow. like fifth or sixth generation. So when I grew up, I was just like you. I was you were in you were in the store at the cashier. I was down at the at the at the you know at the recycling yard. You know, you know, playing on the cranes and the trucks and you know all that kind of stuff. And uh, so and and I did my retail experience at, at Levitt's way back when. And uh, I can remember freaking building more of those little uh, you know lo lost leader uh, brass tables and you know empty plenty eighteen wheelers of ch ch chase lounges, uh, <laughs> scotch guarded. I mean, I did all that stuff, you know. And I was like, oh, I don't think furniture's in my bag. I'm gonna go do something else. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but uh, um, you know the uh, yeah, you know. So it was like I said, it it, it was crazy, you know. So. Yeah. It, it really was. And there was, there was a lot of pivoting involved, but also, um, I mean, in hindsight, I think we, we pivoted all right there. We could have pivoted back faster. Uh, and really, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, uh, I tend to fall victim to shiny object syndrome. And there was a ton of that during the past few years, uh, and had to keep that under control. And I think we could have sort of came back to our core competency a little bit sooner. Cause obviously demand fluctuated significantly. We went from, People were so concerned. Nobody wanted you anywhere near their house initially to, okay, now everything in home services and construction are booming. People are spending more time in their home. There's a lot more projects going on. Um, so, I mean, in hindsight, I think we could have recognized some of those shifts faster, um, but live and you learn. Yeah. My, my wife's residential. She, she's an interior designer. She's basically a contractor, but you know, she does both and, and she's got a good crew and uh, she just exploded in uh, 2022, 21, 2022. And, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, you find the right people with the right crew and um, word of mouth is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and if you do good work too, you know, you yep. know, it's, it's, you know, that's the biggest thing. If you have good work and, you know, your reputation is good. And, uh, but, uh, I remember the first thing I did during, I, I redid my deck, 
I was going to sell my house and I, I went out and I ripped all the planks off and went and before the two by fours, the two by eights and tens before they went to like 25, 30 bucks a piece when they normally should be six to eight dollars. You know, someone said, he goes, hey, when did you buy that? And I'm like, oh, I did, bought it like right at the end of March. You know, and he's like, you know how much those boards would cost today? I'm like, I know, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, man, I freaking, you know. Uh, so I, I was very, I was very much in the same boat. I had a, uh, we had finished my basement I would say 80% of it a year or so before. And then just had that one little one room that basically wasn't done in a set of built-ins in there that I was waiting on. And uh, yeah, that was the uh, spring 2020 project. Yeah, so. no, I, I did the deck. We, we put the house on sale and then we took it off the market because our basement, I had my office in my basement and then I had the, you know, another, you know, it ended up being about another 2,200 square feet, but uh, it was all stubbed out. And uh, so we 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 you know, we took the house off the market, and then we we built the basement over three or four months, and and just did it right. And then uh, we left the uh, one area uh, for if someone wanted a kitchen or they wanted to put a bar in. It was all stubbed. I mean, everything was yep. done. Put the floor in. I mean, and then we sold the house. You know, it was like my trophy house. You know, <laughs> there's three of us in this. You know, huge. I didn't even go back to the other end of the house. I, you know, it was like, you know, but didn't need it. Yeah. So, but I did my basement too. So I know how that goes. And, uh, uh, I have a piece of land up on the lake. So I've been, I bought a couple of years back and I'm like one of the last persons to break ground, but we're going to build that house ourselves. And, uh, uh, anytime you get near water, you, you got, you know, the mold issues and, yep. uh, you know, so it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally there with you. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, interesting you bring that up, but new construction is something that we see a ton of issues with now. Um, and it's really, I mean, it's a combination of different things. There's, depending on the building process that you're using, some homes just stay exposed to the elements for too long before they're under roof and they've got really their water protection uh, components up. But then also some of it comes down to the components. We're using a lot more manufactured materials now that just allow themselves to be uh, damaged by water and susceptible to mold so much more than the solid lumber materials that we commonly used in the past. When you look mm -hmm. at MDF or a lot of the different manufactured products that are some combination of wood particles and glue, and those are creating uh, food sources for mold that it can grow straight through. It can feed on all of it very readily. You know, I, it, it, how many times have you driven by and you're, you're looking at a house and it's not roofed yet and that 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 frame or that foundation is just getting freaking soaked? I, I you know, I, 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 not not that I'm critical, but I'm looking and I'm going, is that stuff really gonna, you know, because it's gonna be covered with something and then it just mm -hmm. festers. So yep. you got to think that you know it it you know it, it can't be good. Uh, no, it's not. I mean that that's a huge point of irritation for me same thing with driving by and seeing just the uh the tyvek house wrap just flapping in the wind uh it's like that's that's not doing yeah. what it's supposed to yeah um yeah. and also building materials just sitting on the dirt for extended period of time just getting soaked in water wicking up and absorbing into it uh and yeah you're right i mean the the moment they if it's not completely dry whenever you go to seal it up you can be creating and locking in some serious issues that are going to be much more difficult to remedy down the line. Yeah. You know, it, it uh, um, talk about what are some of the new, new ways that people find out if they have mold or if there's any issues, you know, because, you know, mold, like if you're not feeling good in your home, you might have mold, you could have it. It could be, it could be a number of reasons, but the bottom yep. line is you'd be amazed. Like if you live in your home and then it has mold and then you go out and you, you go spend, maybe go see your mom or your dog, whatever you spend, play someplace and you're like, God, I feel so much better than, you know, you, there's a problem there. You know, you gotta be able to yep. put one, just a simple one. You know, I don't feel good when I'm at the house or I feel better when I'm not, not in the house. You know what I mean? I mean, that's probably the first thing that comes to mind. Am I right? Or am I wrong? On yeah. That? That's, that's generally going to be, especially for like our clients, that's going to be the most common is they don't feel well. They know that they, they just feel stuffy. They feel tired. You know, you know who's you know, a huge uh, mold advocate, Ted Nugent and his wife, they wrote, mm -hmm. they, they had this whole thing about like, they almost died in their home. They didn't know what was wrong with them. They, they were sick and uh, they moved to Texas. They figured out that, you know, it was, uh, it, it was mold and sure enough, they found it in there. And, uh, but you know, it was like really, really unhealthy. I mean, it yeah. was, it was bad. 
you know, and there's well, a guy that lives off the, lives off the, you know, the, the land and, you know, does all that stuff, you know, manly stuff. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, they, Shanette, the, the wife, she had this whole, I think, I don't know if they wrote a book on it, but it was all about the house and how it almost killed them. And it was, it, it was, it was a good read. So, um, and, and yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head there. It's almost always wives that notice it sooner. They tend to be just more sensitive uh, and more aware of a lot of those kind of issues. But that's one of the, the tricky things with it is everybody's immune system is different. So yeah. it, no two people are going to be affected exactly the same. So a lot of times we'll also see a real estate transaction where somebody new is moving into the house. People have been living there with this problem for years and they just, they were, they were less susceptible to it. So they didn't really notice it, but mm -hmm. you get a new family in there. You get new people with uh, different immune systems, different sensitivities to mold, and immediately they start to react to it and notice that it's an issue. So that's why we're very, very big on education for, uh, everybody in the real estate industry, your realtors, home inspectors, because you have no idea just because the people who were there didn't have a problem. That doesn't tell you that the new people aren't going to. Yeah, absolutely. If, um, if uh, talk about what you see coming down the pike, you know, as we go into the second half of the year and uh, you know, the next couple of years for mold medics. Yeah. So, I mean, just sort of immediate future going into the summer, this is when we see a lot of problems. A lot of things really uh, perk up for two reasons. Number one, we tend to get a lot of rainfall. So generally get a lot more of those big, heavy summer storms lead to more water, water infiltration into basements, into crawl spaces, through leaky windows, all that kind of traditional stuff that once water's in the house, it's going to be getting absorbed by some organic building material, and that's going to create a mold problem. So we see a ton of that. Uh, we also see a ton of humidity issues. And that's something that people really don't think about or don't uh, address commonly enough is the humidity in the home. And humidity over the summer is going to go up, 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 up. And if you're running air conditioning, that's going to help lower that humidity a little bit. But depending on where you are, how high the humidity is, how much moisture you have coming in from other sources, that very well may not be enough. And you may, to add, may need to add supplemental dehumidification to the home to, to help keep those from... Uh, to help keep it from developing into a mold problem. Hey, you're and, in Pittsburgh. Uh, we know it gets humid. It gets hot in the summer, just like here in Atlanta, man. It's freaking hot, man. Like yep. you know, July, August, it gets brutal. You know, it's beautiful right now because there's no humidity. But mm -hmm. we know that you know God's gonna flip give it a month or two. Out. Yeah, in about a month, you know, sooner, you know, sometime in June, it's gonna happen. You'll be you wake up, you walk outside, it's like whoa, getting hit by a two by four. So, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, you know mold is just uh you know it's just a bad thing and uh if you have it in there um yeah um go ahead Some, something we see a lot that uh, causes particular problems in the summer people will go away on vacation they'll leave for a week or two uh go off to wherever they're going and they'll want to save money so they'll turn the air conditioning off and whenever they come back immediately just hit with this musty odor just because the humidity was left unchecked, there was no air movement or air circulation throughout the home. So humidity levels just rise and rise and rise, and then boom, you have mold growth. And as soon as they walk back in the door, they notice it. Yeah. Uh, my mom, she's got a house out in Phoenix. She leaves, goes back to Ohio for the summer. Anyway, uh, last year, they they locked the house up. They have a person that comes over there every couple of weeks, you know, flushes the toilets, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just check on the house. Property managers. Anyway, uh, uh, the water line broke on the uh, refrigerator and the water was running for about 10 days or, you know, a good, good amount of time. And uh, you'd be they couldn't get the door open. It was a wood door. They couldn't get it open, swollen shut. So finally, they got the door open. All this freaking wall of water comes out. I mean, the water had to be, you know, 40 inches high all the way through the house. No basement, obviously, in the desert because of the water table. But uh, yep. They had to uh, they had to gut the freaking entire house, man. All the, it, I mean, it was yeah. just like the, basically the house was 15 years old, 16. Anyway, they had to gut the whole house. But, you know, water, you can't see it. You can't hear it. Well, you can hear it, but you can't smell it. And uh, it's uh, but what, you know, not only the water disaster, but, you know, everything had to get thrown out because of mold yep. and uh, yep. and dirty water. And, you know, all, you know, so it's. Uh, they just went through it and uh, good, they had good insurance, thank God. But uh, uh, it, uh, you know, I've had, I've had water sensor guys on here and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. 
I remember when, you know, the shutdown happened and all these people came out with all these different kind of sprays and this and that, and, uh, you know, you know, trying to figure out, you know, the silver bullet that will take care of this thing. And, uh, uh, you know, as my doctor said, wash your hands, don't touch your face. If you get sick, call me, you'll be okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did, but I learned a lot. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, if, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, um, but before that, if you, uh, if you wanted to leave one positive thought or phrase with our listeners out there, before we, we get into your contact info, what would that be as we uh, go into the second half of the year? So talking predominantly more, as to, a retailer, as a franchisee, yeah. as a, as a yep. you know, as an all around entrepreneur. Yeah. Talking, talking to business owners. It's, and it's something I do have to remind myself of a lot, but yeah, never let perfection get in the way of progress. That is the biggest, biggest thing for me. I was just working with a couple of buddies who were uh, trying to open up a restaurant and never ended up even getting off the ground just because they wanted everything to be perfect and to do it 100% right out of the gate. And you're, you're never going to have that. Sometimes you just got to try it, run with it. And that's uh, so, so important for businesses. Yeah, listen, you know, perfection only comes through practice. And the only way you practice is by doing stuff and making mistakes. Yep. So I'm 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 all for you you will play as you practice. And yep. uh you you're never going to be perfect because you always should be improving. And uh uh that's um I, I, taking a couple of digital classes and and it's all about mindset too. You know, mm -hmm. surround yourself with positive people. If you got any of those poo pooers or doggy downers, get rid of them. <laughs> they're yep. not. They're not worth. We, we call them Eeyores. But Eeyores, ne negative energy. Di you yeah. know what? There's eight billion on the planet, man. Don't surround yourself like because I mean they're just a waste of time. They're dead weight. They're they're weighing your boat down, and um, uh, so you know that that's my gig. So you know I'm right there with your you know with your saying. If someone if someone wanted to reach out to you. And, uh, you know, bounce some questions off you or, or, you know, hey, man, what can I do about this? If I'm doing, you know, if I'm pre-building or, you know, how do I check? Or maybe I think I have, you know, have that stuff in the house. What do I do? Uh, how would they reach out to you? So we've got a variety of different resources on our YouTube channel. Just go or just uh, YouTube. search YouTube for Mold Medics. Yep. Um, on our website, www.moldmedics.com. Tons of resources there as well. And you can reach me by email at any time. It's just tim at moldmedics.com. And always happy. We get, I get probably, I don't know, a couple emails a week from people all over the country with just basic questions, looking sure. for advice, that kind of thing. And I always happy to help. Absolutely. If someone, you know, it, it, listen, if you got an issue, if you're not feeling good, if you think the house might be doing it to you, and believe me, it's crazy. It's not conspiracy stuff. It's just, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, you might have a problem you know, it's better to know than not know. And, uh, uh, you know, it's like getting your oil changed or, you know, as you get older, you got to have certain procedures done, you know, but, you know, your house is one of the, one of the most important things that you're probably going to buy in your entire lifetime. You might as well make sure that it's safe for you because, uh, especially as the, as it gets old, like you said, if you're in a wet area or, or you know, you know what, you know where, where it's going to be, uh, that, uh, and you'd be surprised where it could be. So, but it's just good to know if you, if you have yeah. anything, just ask somebody, call a professional. So absolutely. Absolutely. And if anybody's looking to get into the indoor air quality industry, uh, we do have franchises available. We're looking to franchise all over the country. So uh, you can find our information online as well. Call of action. I love it. Way to go. If, if anybody wants to reach me, I'm at David C at CCR dash mag.com. Uh, listen, we're always looking for content. We just had three and a half million people hit our site last month uh in april uh you know it uh it's it's been amazing to the 29 million people that hit a, hit the site last year that you know they were hits whatever thank you so much and uh you know uh but send me something if you you know it could be a charity golf tournament personnel lines, a new product i mean his, look tim's publicist sent me a note and you know i'm, I'm he's, i do other stuff for other clients there and i was like hey yeah mold this sounds good so um uh, that's how, you know, look, and I look at everything. So send it to me, you know, it's tough getting the magazine, but we have so many different social media stuff and we pass it out to you. We give you the link. We want you to share. It's win-win for everybody. So, uh, and, you know, and like my show too on F on our F and J account and our channel here too. So we, we need the likes. So you want to keep those algorithms going and stuff. So, well, Tim, 
pleasure talking to a Western Pennsylvanian. Uh, you know, I'm from Philly originally, so we're both from the big state of PA, uh, but, you know, on either ends. And um, uh, we appreciate the input, uh, you know, on, uh, you know, what you've done. And uh, congratulations on where you are today from where you started, you know. And just remember, if you didn't start, you would have never gotten where you were today. You know, Thank you. So, so if you want to do something, do it in a year from now, you'll thank yourself, you know. So, uh, Tim, say goodbye to our listeners out there. Commercial Construction Coffee Talk up there in Pittsburgh. Well, thank you guys very much for having me. I appreciate it, David. And uh, everybody, yeah, stay safe, stay safe out there. Yeah. And uh, listen, if you're out there on a construction site, we want, we want you to be safe. Make sure you can come home at night. The heat's coming in. Humidity, we we're just talking about. It, so make sure you drink lots of water. Because we want you to make sure you stay hydrated out there on the sites. And with that said, I'm going to sign off from Sugar Hill, just below the Buford Dam on Lake Lanier, about 25 miles north north of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Tim, if I get to Pittsburgh, I'm going to look you up and uh, we'll shake hands and uh, talk P-Town. All right? Definitely do that. All right. And to all you out there, Cross Construction Coffee Talk, thanks for finding us. And we will see you next time on another episode of CCCT. And uh, Tim, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.